Today we have an honor to present another great chess player and fantastic chess author, Grandmaster Spiros Kapnisis. Together we created the course 8 steps to create a successful plan in any situation. You're very welcome to click the link below of that video to read more about that course. He prepared a nice lesson for us, so let's jump in and enjoy this. The next position is taken from a game, uh, Miles Webster. Um, let's start by examining the position and see the right plans for both sides. Uh, we can see that white has a weak pawn on d3. Black probably will put it under pressure and create some problems for white. Um, while white, we can say that has a better placed queen and probably uh, a bishop with more prospects than uh, the bishop on e7. Uh, here uh, Miles came with a brilliant plan, played the move king f1. His idea is to bring the king to e2 in order to cover the weak pawn on d3 and uh, allow his rooks to have more uh, mobility. Uh, by placing the, the king on e2, uh, white uh, will have uh, two uh, completely different plans. He could go for a4, a5, which is a minority attack, in order to create uh, a weak pawn on the, king si on the queen side for, uh, for white and a possible target. While uh, with the king on e2, it could be possible to play uh, g4, g5, uh, taking more space in the king side and organizing a king side attack, probably followed by yeah, h4 and knight e4. Let's see how the game uh, continued. White played king f1, black doubled the rooks, uh, which is very natural, a king e2, and black uh, played knight e8. Uh, a good move with the idea of uh, bringing the bishop to f6 in order that, to counter bishop b2. One thing that we must note is that... Uh, Plan is the ability to organize your pieces into a common goal and predict the future. The majority of the chess players has problem on that. Hence, the course 8 simple steps to make a successful plan in any situation is the right solution for you. For more information, please follow the link below of that video. With the white king on e2, it is very difficult for black to open the center. Uh, it's, it's almost impossible for black to play e5, f, f5 and d4. And that's why white decided to travel with his king to e2. Black played knight e8, and uh, white played a4. Uh, here we have an important decision uh, from black. Uh, black decided to stop a5 and play a5 himself, uh, permanently uh, weakening the pawn on b6. Uh, normally, this move would be played a lot easier and it would be a lot stronger if black had... Uh, the time and the option to to bring his knight to b4. Um, he could try to regroup him by playing queen c8 and maybe knight c7, knight a6, and knight b4. But uh, as we will see, uh, white uh, will stop this plan uh, efficiently. Um, playing a modest move like h6 and allowing a5. Uh, make some sense uh, from the black side since black will open the queen side. The pawn on c5 and on a7 are uh, somewhat weak, but at least there are some open files and the white king shouldn't feel too comfortable in the center. Um, yeah, in case black played f5, uh, white will continue with knight b5, queen c8, and c4. Opening, opening lines in the king side and uh, getting some uh, attack against the black king. After a5, knight b5 was played, and here uh, black 
over the queen exchange, which is a mistake. Uh, black should have tried to keep the queens on the board by playing a move like queen b8. Uh, because uh, with the queens off the board, white king will be perfectly uh, placed on e2. He will be better placed than the black king. And uh, we will see that uh, this will play a major role in the continuation of the game. Uh, after queen b8, rook b1, h6. The position is uh, maybe slightly more pleasant for white, but nothing special. Um, after queen b7, white gladly changed, take the rook b1. And here knight c7 is uh, another uh, exchange of pieces uh, offered by black, which is again a mistake and a serious one. After knight c7, black's position is very difficult to save. Uh, if black played a move like bishop f6, white should probably uh, stop the exchange of the bishops, don't allow, play bishop a3, and uh, get some space in the king side and in the center. Uh, white has a big advantage because the pawn on b6 is uh, a serious weakness, while the pawn on d3 uh, is well covered by the white king. Um, so, white uh, will need to work in this position, but uh, he definitely has the advantage. After knight c7, uh, white took, and here Miles missed uh, a nice shot in order to get a completely winning position uh, immediately. After uh, bishop a3, uh, black uh, should defend the pawn on b6. Um, if he pins the pawn on b6 with rook b7, white can uh, play immediately d4, uh, leading to a very favorable uh, rook endi ending. White has a pawn up and uh, clear uh, the better king and uh, more active rooks. The position is completely winning. Uh, while there was another plan, doubling the rook from the B file and uh, uh, playing bishop d2 with the idea of bishop takes a5. Black is in no position to stop white's plan and white is winning material. Um, anyway, white played bishop e5. Rook c6. f4. Here comes uh, the next step in white's plan. Black has a clear weakness on b6, but he will probably be... Uh, he will be able to, to defend it by playing a move like rook d7, bishop d8. The pawn on b6 is pretty much covered. So, white is trying to expand in the king side, uh, get some space advantage, and uh, probably he will try to create a new weakness in black's camp. After f6, bishop a1, a7, f3. becomes obvious that white will try to play g5 at some point. Uh, in order to open some files and create some witnesses. After bishop c7, white starts to, Im to improve his king, e5. Of course, white doesn't want to open the position in the center. He has no interest because black will get some counterplay, so he plays f5. White is ready to bring his king to e4, and uh, he will slowly go for the plan with h4 and g5. Black played e4, sacrificing a pawn, but after d takes e4, rook d6 and e5, white gets this nice square for his king, and uh, a second weakness will be created on e5. f takes e5, king e4, rook d8, piece of c3, a nice 
I move again in the theme of prophylaxis covering D2 and uh, minimizing Black's counterplay. Okay, it's six. As we see, white is in no hurry, and here is the right time to take on e5. White won a pawn, but um, more importantly, he has uh, the more active pieces. Um, g4, seven, and here g6 is a cle clever idea. Uh, white manages to activate his rook from b3 after h takes d6. Of course, white should take with the rook. And black and white got a completely winning Kuronkat game. After, yeah, the game didn't last long. Εύχομαι να σας άρεσε το βίντεο και τώρα παρακαλώ επιτρέψτε μου να μοιραστώ μαζί σας ένα δώρο. Στην αρχική σελίδα μπορείτε να πατήσετε εδώ που λέει δώστε μου πρόσβαση και μόλις πατήσετε εκεί θα πάτε σε μια νέα σελίδα όπου μπορείτε να διαβάσετε διάφορα πράγματα εδώ τα οποία έχω φτιάξει με ωραία γραφικά και στο τέλος να δώσετε το όνομά σας και το email σας πατώντας το δείξτε μου πώς. Εάν το κάνετε αυτό θα πάρετε το μάθημα δωρεάν πώς να αποφύγετε τα λάθη, ένα μάθημα σε βίντεο και σε κείμενο το οποίο θα σας βοηθήσει να γίνετε καλύτεροι παίκτες.